Now we're getting down to some really uh, more rare cases in your research. I think things like this, you can use them. Uh, I don't use them very much unless the research is related to that topic. So for example, if you're relating some kind of online satisfaction, dissatisfaction, or your research is related to consumer attitudes in their shopping preferences, you may be looking at online communities. And if you're looking at online communities, you want to maybe cite or quote something somebody said. So for example, you could be on Amazon and you look at somebody's review of something. Or you could be online on Facebook and look at somebody talking about a product and you want to use that information. How do you do that? Well, the way to do that is you have the person's name. Again, last name, first name, middle name the year that they posted it, the month and the day, because more information is more clear, what's the title of the post, then you need to tell something about the post, like a post on Facebook or a review on Amazon, and then you need to tell the URL address, where did you get it from. Let's take a look at an example here. So we begin with this is the person who posted the information. Last name is Rampers, Rampersad. First name is T. 2005, comma, June 8th was the day of the posting. And the title of the posting was RE, Traditional Knowledge and Traditional Cultural Expression. So again, we begin with a capital and then the rest are all lowercase, just like the title of an article. Where did we get it from? online forum comment and retrieve from and here's the URL right URL so that looks kind of familiar to the way we've been doing it so far only now we're gonna say it's from an online community here's another example Smith s 2006 January 5 so we have the year comma month day RE, Disputed Estimates of IQ, Electronic Mailing List Message. So where did we get it from? An electronic mailing list message. It was retrieved from this location here. Oh, let me go back here. Another example. PZ Mears. 2007, January, the unfortunate prerequisite and consequences of partitioning your mind, web blog post, retrieved from this location here. Now in this case, we don't have a first name and a last name because this person doesn't really have a clear first name and last name. In fact, online, people will often use pseudonyms or handles and they become very strange. They're not regular names at all. That's fine you can still use that but of course you're not going to be able to say what's the first name what's the last name that's okay you just don't put a name with a comma and then another name because that means surname and then first name or family name and first name so you just go ahead and put whatever name they've used without the comma okay we have another example here here's a perfect example middle kid is middle kid a name Middle kid is a handle. This is what people use as their kind of nickname online. Well, we don't know if that's first name or last name. It doesn't matter, so we don't use a comma in there. Then you go ahead and you have the year, the month, and the day of the post, and then the title, RE, the unfortunate prerequisite and consequences of partitioning your mind. Same idea. And then down here you have the actual address. How about a video on YouTube? Well, very similar. We have the name if we have it. Now again, it's very possible that the person doesn't have a regular name. They're using a handle, a nickname, or something else. That's okay. But if they do have a name, and you can see that it's a family name and a first name, then you reverse them and use a comma. If not, you don't. In this case, we do have a name. Norton is a family name, the surname. R is the given name. 
2006 is the year November 4th. That's the year it was, that the year, the month, and the day it was posted online. Not the day you saw it, but the day it was posted. How to train a cat to operate a light switch. And this is a video file retrieved from there. This is the URL. Okay, so important to remember that day, that it's not the day you access it, but the day it's posted because later other people are going to be looking for that and they want to be able to find which one it is you looked at. Okay, wow. That is like a lot of stuff, isn't it? It's very overwhelming at times to keep all of this in mind. It's important to remember though that you don't need to remember all of it. What you do is step by step every reference that comes in, you just check. Is this an easy reference or a little bit special? Most of your references will be very normal. It's going to be an article from a journal. It's going to have the author and it's going to have a, an article title. It's going to have a journal name and a date, an issue number. It's all going to be very straightforward. As long as that information coming in, you double check it. You make sure, hey, is this right? It goes into your database that you're using, then everything will be okay. Every time you see something special though, pay attention. And then what do you do? Get your APA manual out. Hopefully you get the ebook. And then you can just check the ebook quickly and you can say, well, this is exactly how this rule works. It's a great way to get it straight. But you don't want to think, I gotta keep it all inside of my brain. That's a little bit difficult. All right, good luck writing your reference list for your APA. Okay, we're going to look at the MLA, some examples. It's through examples that we can really learn the details. So let's go ahead and begin on that. Garzanga, 1967, flash pictures to the right or left visual field of each patient whose corpus callosum had been surgically severed. So of course, right away we can see there's a problem because we have a year. In MLA, we don't include the year. Rather, we include page numbers. In this case, we just have Garzella, Garze, Garzanglia, Garzangiga, or whatever. But we have no page number because it's just referencing the whole general work. So it could be the whole paper in general. In one of the earliest studies, Anid, Sheena, and Sign, 1961, researchers presented a variety of stimuli to Yogi as he meditated. And then we have a second sentence, Anid, Sheena, and Sign reported no disruption of the Yogi's alpha wave as indicated by EEG recording by a tuning fork or a hand clap. So we have two sentences, we have two references to the same paper, but right away you can see there's a problem here. We've got the year, which we know is not right. We also know that we have one, two, three authors, and in MLA we don't do that. In MLA style, if you have three or more authors you use at all, even the very first time in the paper, which is different from APA style. And then the second part, we go ahead and reference them the same way again. Now here we have no page number because again, we're looking at the overall paper, which is okay, but usually we would include a page number to be a little bit more specific. Personality changes may also occur later in life, New Garden, patterns of aging and extending the human lifespan, semicolon, you see the semicolon there, right? Semicolon, Newgarten and Has ha Hagstad, 1967. So clearly 1967 is wrong because we do not include years in MLA. But what kind of case do we have here? This is something a little bit interesting. So let's take a look at this. Newgarten is an author. Newgarten and Hagstad are authors together on one paper. We have two, so we use the and here. That's also different than the APA. We do not use the ampersand in MLA, no. So we're inside the parentheses, but still we use the word A-N-D. Here what we have is Newgarten is the author, but he's the author of 
one work here and another work here. So we have, we're citing two sources, but by the same author. And in this case, we see they have quotation marks, which means it's a chapter of a book, or it's a smaller part of something that's bigger. So we are making three citations here, but two are by the same author. The concept of chunking was introduced by Miller, Miller 154. What is 154? 154 is the page number. But of course, we do not need to repeat the name here. The correct way for this would be simply Miller and then the page number is here. Other authors focus on the role of effect. So Zank, American Psychologist, 1984, page 36. Well, we can see that this is a problem. This doesn't look right at all for MLA. Of course, in the MLA, we keep it simple. We just have the author and the page. Of course, we don't include the journal or the year or any other details like that. No comment either.